Okay, hello there, I'm Dennis. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for dropping in. We're going to talk about Ghost BSD. And this time we're going to walk through in installing VirtualBox. Got it right here. It's installed and it works fabulously. I've got Arts Default set up. I got the BSD set up, uh, installed, not just set up. And I got some Arts Spins in here that I haven't actually install those yet it may be a video <laughs> when i get a when i install a program through my terminal most of, most of the time or some of the time i should say especially with VirtualBox, you're going to get a terminal readout and what i do in a previous video i showed you what i do is i actually just copy the, the entire readout and i copy it over in the my, text editor, my case feather pad or mouse pad or genie or Kate or any of those Z. <laughs> uh, and I copy those over and then I can go through them in my leisure and I can determine which ones actually need to be done or which ones are just the options. Some just are telling you what they've done. In the computer readout that I got or the terminal readout, I copied and pasted it over into a, a main Edit, edit or I pasted it on feather put feather pad saved it went back and looked through it I did some things but I cut out everything there that I did about in virtual box and I pasted them in a new a new text file and I went through them one at a time until I got them and got it installed I found it very funny at the very end of the whole virtual box thing it said where guest editions are installed, that it prefers VBox SVGA, and that is true sometimes, probably half the time. I think it's in particular they talking about BSDs because this does seem to be a very good option in the video output for uh, BSDs, and it says do not enable 3D acceleration. Doing so will invisibly lose the preferences for VBox SVGA. You may ignore the yellow alert that encourages the use of the VM SVGA. <laughs> I just I thought that was pretty neat. First thing I did was I installed. Let's see, I got it right here. I installed VirtualBox hyphen OSE hyphen OSE additions, hyphen OSE KMOD for the kernel. Once I did that, I got this computer readout and I copied and pasted it. And then I went through this one at a time and I started at the very first thing it says. First thing it says is about the KMOD, the kernel module. It needs to load and it will when you reboot, but it says to avoid crashes due to kernel incap in <laughs> incompatibility, this module will only load on FreeBSD 13.1 kernels. And I just showed you at the beginning of this NeoFetch, we're running 13.1. When they go to a different patch, when FreeBSD goes to a different patch, GhostBSD adopts that upgrade or update, upgrade, I guess. Then that tells me I may have to reinstall Virtual box. I'm not sure. I'll wait and find out. <laughs> Again, message from Virtual Box. Virtual Box was installed. You need to load the VBox driver kernel module via sudo nano nano bootloader.com. So let's let's go into mine. Now by default, Ghost BSD comes with uh, the easy editor. You might see it sometimes as uh, EE, and there's the VBox driver load, yes. Now, I got a message here that it needed to be done, but it was already done for me. When I come in here to add it, it was done. So, nice. Let me leave this editor if I can. Oh, I'm in nano. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so next thing it says we got to do got our adder self to the vbox users group here's the command to do this pw group mod vbox users hyphen m and then your username and this done both pseudo privileges or actually this is generally the way i do this pseudo ee 
Fancy. And I'll go in here and I'll run through the entire group list and add myself to the things that I need to or don't need to. Uh, now this is easy editor. Escape will get me out of there. So uh, that was already in there. I added myself to the VBox users. When I looked, I was already a member of the group. <laughs> Reboot the machine to load the kernel modules. Okay, so once you get through rebooting some other stuff that you're going to want, uh, bridging support for like USBs or a CD drive, what have you, you'll need to put in the etcrc.com. VBox net enable equals yes. Now I think I should have took better notes because I do believe that this was already in the rc.conf file anyway when I was through. Now I don't think this next one was. I think I had to actually add this one. But we need to be a member of the operator group to read and write permissions to a USB stick, uh, whether it's in VirtualBox or on your machine. Once we're the operator in the operator group. We'll add in that uh, Etsy dev fs dot rules. We'll add this whole command here. Let me go ahead. And... Sometimes I get carried away or something. Go ahead and open this up. I'm in nano. We'll page all the way down. And looking for under system 10 right here, uh, USB path, USB operator. That's his first line. You see these other lines, though, they'll come in right down next step. Those are in there as well. So we'll go ahead and get out of here. My nano, yep. I need to just use one. I'll close that out. In the etcrc.comp, this needs to be added. This was already in the etcrc.comp file for me. I didn't have to restart the service because I, I rebooted. And the guest editions, if you want the, if you install the guest editions, which you saw I did, we're going to need to put this as sysrc vbox guest enable yes and vbox service enable yes. Once you do that, the guest editions will work. Here it says in some situations a panic will occur when the kernel module loads having no more than one virtual cpu might mitigate the issue so if you do an install it's saying if you do an install sometimes you might get a kernel panic if you'll go back into your settings and reduce it down to one cp or one core of your cpu that might mitigate the issue i've never actually run across this so if you do, though, take it down to one CPU and try it again. We'll need to be a member of the wheel group. Here it's kind of contradiction itself. The settings dialog for FreeBSD guest encourages use of the VMSVGA graphics controller. While this might suit installations of FreeBSD D without a desktop environment, a, comp a common use case. It is not appropriate where guest editions are installed. So it was not contradictory at all. It backed up further what the first thing said. <laughs> also in the readout, there was a, a section on troubleshooting. I went ahead and copied those and made this a record so I can go back to it if I ever experience a, a fatal error at fatal error error as a non-root user may fail with the fatal error in sa factory you get that little box that comes up there and uh, you can expand it and you'll see this written in there apparently like i said i've never run across this particular use case and they encourage you for troubleshooting check the wiki and here's their virtual boxes actual home page and that's how i installed virtual box on ghost bsd <laughs> and uh, it works it just works most like at least half of that list i just went through was already done for me i wish i would have marked them so i could say more definitively yes this was done for me 
but it, I didn't have to do a lot. I think most of the things I did have to do uh, was had to do with the preferences. We go to preferences here, you'll see extensions. So we had the guest editions and, you know, that I don't think they've done that for me because, that, you know, they don't know if you're going to have guest editions or not. So anyway, the BSDs, I got Dragonfly BSD set up. Let's go ahead and start that. Why not? So here I'm using the stock VM SVGA driver, and it seems to work just fine. But when I change it back to the, or change it to the other one, it, it won't boot. Let's see, what is the other one? Here, VBox SVGA. Why is that? Get that out of the way. And another plus, in my opinion, on Ghost BSD, you do not have to worry about updates. It has an update station. When there is an update, it'll check. Every time you boot up, it'll check, and then it'll check periodically if there's an update. If there's an update, it'll appear, it will appear down in what I would call my systems tray over here where you see OBS and all that clock and stuff. This is Dragonfly BSD. Let's see. Wow, that was a big old readout. Dragon 5 BSD 6.2. 525 packages installed. And I probably do need to do an update. I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to shut down for now. Wait a minute. I'm going to do it this way. Pseudo. Shut down. I've P for power now. Don't wait. Do it now. And as you can see, this virtual box works just it works great. Let's see, go here and go help. One of the one of the important thing I have found about virtual box is when you do install the extension pack, in particular Pay attention to this revision right here. So this is user interface version 6134. Right here, all you see is 61, but it's 6134. And it's revision 150636. And that's, if you try to install an extension pack and it's not that same version, it'll fail. So when you, if you download an extension pack and try to install or install it that way with the, uh, using VirtualBox to install it. Make sure the revision number is the same. Otherwise, it'll just fail and you'll be like, what, that wasn't right. Once again, I thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you on another video. You run GhostBSD, install VirtualBox. Use it. It's pretty nice. Peace out, guys. Bye.